sensitive to what you're trying to do here today, Lord God. Let us receive everything that you have for us, oh God. Lord God, we pray that you have your hand upon your speakers as they bring forth the word today, Lord God. Have your hand upon the singers and the musicians, but above all, Lord God. Have your hand upon your congregation, Lord God. Lord God bless them today, Lord God. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
your generation just continue to worship him because he's a good good god this morning amen why don't you shout
should still rejoice in the Lord because the word of God says to rejoice in the Lord when always and let's give thanks unto God even when it is tough even when it is hard amen why don't you shout a shout of praise unto God and just thank him this morning hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord Get up out of that grave, amen. Why don't you turn to two or three people and say, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Sydney. If this is your first time here, you're a very special guest. We give you a, a, a warm welcome and I uh, hope that it's not your last time here unless you're just passing through. But... We uh, hope you enjoy the service today. And if it is your first time, we have our VIP area for our honoured guests. And it's just to the right there. As you head out the front door, you'll see a little bookshop uh, on the side. And you'll have your own coffee and gift there for you. And it'd be great if you can fill out a, uh, fill out a guest card as well, just so that we can keep you up to date with what's happening here at the Pentecostals in Sydney. For everyone else, if you've been here heaps of times already... You still get free coffee as well if, you, if you're into coffee. Um, D 
there's cookies as well. There's other things, not just coffee, which we don't like coffee. There's, uh, we have water as well. <laughs> Free water. <laughs> but uh, it'd be great if you could stick around and just have some fellowship. And that's all part of coming, meeting together as a church. Amen. We, we get to worship God together, hear from the Word of God, and also have fellowship with one another. Moving on, we have Resurrection Sunday next Sunday. Turn to your neighbor say, next Sunday, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Next Sunday. So be here for that service as, uh, and bring a friend, bring a family member if you can as well. Let's fill the house. Amen. Beyond, uh, this is coming up on in May, and on, the se- on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of May. Now the teaching sessions are free, but if you want to come to the recordings on the Friday and Saturday night, you'll have to uh, purchase tickets for that. So if you want to find out more, just go on the POS website for more details. So make sure you prepare for that. Financial peace. So Brother Greg Wilmot and Brother Scott Rumsey will be conducting uh, teachings on financial peace after the second service beginning on Sunday the 7th of April. This will go for four weeks and uh, will be uh, some teaching on how to gain financial peace who, who, who wishes or who, who wants to be more in control of their finances, amen? And, you know, you've got to, you know, overcome Thompson's law, you know, make sure you, you, you spend less than what you earn, and all this sort of stuff. So financial peace, this will be really good. If you sign up and register, you get a free lunch, so that's good as well. So if you're sticking around after for the second service for four weeks, you'll learn things like, how to budget, uh, the difference between unhealthy debt and healthy debt, and how to manage finances. So make sure it's based on biblical principles, the teaching from uh, Dave Ramsey. So make sure you sign up for that. The Kingdom Elevated Youth are having a bake sale, um, pre-orders. There's pickup as well for those who have ordered already, but um, you can make some orders today. It's forty dollars for a dessert box with six cookies and six brownies. Who likes brownies and cookies? Who hates them? Put up your hand if you hate them. Maybe hate what they do to you, but but uh, please support the youth and uh, buy yourself some uh, brownies and cookies. You can give it to your neighbour or something if you don't want to eat. Well, if we could all be upstanding, this is our time to give back unto the Lord of our tithes and our offerings and to um, show God you know, our appreciation in um, supporting the kingdom of God with that which he has blessed us with. Amen. And if I could ask the ushers to come, this is going to be our time that we're we can, able to give to the Lord. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. We give begrudgingly. You know that but he always bless a cheerful giver. So if we give out of the goodness of our heart, with generosity in our heart to support the kingdom of God, God will bless the cheerful giver. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we recognize that every good gift comes from above. And Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for everything you've blessed us with, Lord Jesus. For blessing us, Lord Jesus, with a with a bed to sleep in, with food to eat, for blessing our finances, Lord Jesus, for blessing us with the gospel, for the good news. And Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would extend, Lord, what we give this morning, Lord, for the furtherance of your gospel. Bless those that give and bless those that would like to but cannot. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come give unto the Lord. New Life Class and Sunday School could be dismissed.
morning. We're going to continue with worship at Sunday School in the New Life in Crèche. You may be dismissed. But let's continue worshiping. This is our great God that we're worshiping this morning. He is our one and only great God, and He does great things. So if you're here this morning, give your heart to God this morning. Give Him your everything. Give Him your attention, your time, your worship and your praise. As we sing these songs, lift up your worship to Him. He inhabits our praises this morning. So I encourage you to lift up our great God this morning, for He is great and greatly to be praised this morning. I encourage you to lift up our great God, amen.
Hallelujah. We worship you, oh God. We worship you. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning, whether you're online or in, in the sanctuary. Thank you for being with us today. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Pastor Stan was meant to be in Timor this weekend, but he is unwell. So we're going to pray for him. He needs to leave for the Philippines tomorrow to minister a conference. So when we pray this morning, we're going to pray for him. I want to welcome Brother Damien, Sister Mendy and their children. They're from the States. They're on their way to New Zealand as missionaries and we welcome them today. Thank you for being with us. And all our guests, it's lovely to have you with us today. Amen. Amen. Why don't we turn in our Bible into 2 Timothy chapter 4. Sorry to make you stand again, but it is our custom in honor of the Word of God to stand for the reading of the Word. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 to 6 says, But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. The thoughts of this sermon have been in my thoughts and focus since January this year. 
And I'm confident as I sought God that today is the day to minister those thoughts. And in the providence of God, that whoever is, hears this message, whether in house or online, that God desires to speak through us today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your beautiful presence that we feel in your house this morning. There's nothing like being in your presence, oh God. We pray your anointing, oh God, over my lips of clay, over everything, Lord, that will be said and done this morning. We pray for our pastor, Lord. We love him, oh God, and we're asking you right now that you will touch his body. Lord God, that you will bring complete healing. Restore his voice, oh God. Restore his strength, Lord. We're asking you right now, Lord, that you will touch him right now. Have your way, Lord, for the rest of this service, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I want to focus on the first sentence of verse 6. The Apostle Paul referred to his life as being poured out as a drink offering. This phrase would have made sense to those hearing it because Israelites, they understood what drink offerings were. God had given Moses instructions regarding the temple and the daily sacrifices that the Israelites were commanded to perform. These sacrifices included a meat offering, a grain offering, and a drink offering. But unlike most of the animal and grain offerings, a portion of which was retained for the priests or the worshippers to consume, the entire drink offering was poured out upon the altar of the burnt offering. Thank you, brother. I grabbed my phone instead of my Bible. How bad is that? Amen. The entire drink offering was poured out upon the altar of the offering. All of the drink offering belonged to God. In keeping with our theme of 2024, I've entitled my thoughts today, a life poured out for his glory. A life poured out for his glory. The drink offering is mentioned a number of times in the Bible. The first mention of it was when God appeared to Jacob at Bethel in Genesis 35. And after Jacob had, encountered with the, had an encounter with the Lord, Jacob poured out a drink offering unto the Lord on the pillar that he had set up. In Samuel 23, David's men broke through the Philistine garrison to bring David back a drink of water from the well at Bethlehem that he so yearned for. But rather than drink it, because of the great sacrifice of these, that these men made to get him the water, David valued the water as so precious that he poured it, all of it out as a sacrifice unto the Lord, like he had seen done in the temple. Isaiah spoke of the Messiah in Isaiah 53, 12. And he said that he poured out his soul unto death. And in Matthew 26, during the first Passover with his disciples, Jesus, well, first Passover in the New Testament, Jesus himself referred to his life being poured out. Jesus gave the disciples a cup and referring to his blood, he said, it is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. So pouring out denotes completely emptying a vessel of what was in it. This morning I want to minister on what does a life poured out look like for you and me as Christians living in the 21st century. Romans 11.36 says, For everything comes from Him and exists by His power and is intended for His glory. Amen. All glory to Him forever. Amen. God created you and me. We didn't evolve from apes. Amen to that. We came from God. We were made in His image. We exist by His power. Amen. He put breath in my lungs this morning and in your lungs every single day of every single moment. And we sang that this morning. It is His breath in our lungs. Hallelujah. You and I cannot breathe without God. 
We exist by his power. And the Bible says we were created for his pleasure and his glory. Let me read 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7 to you. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like clay, fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Hallelujah. If you have the Holy Ghost within you this morning, then you possess that great treasure. Hallelujah. It is the greatest treasure that you will ever have. It is not what we own physically in this life. It is not what we can gain from this life in treasure, in money, in, in possessions. But it is having God live with inside of us. It is knowing that we have our salvation sealed by the power and the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. It, because it is that treasure that power within you and I that will quicken our mortal body on that day when Jesus returns. It is that power that will open the graves of our loved ones who have gone on before us. And the light that shines in us is reflected as we live in the darkness that surrounds us. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? For the purpose of showing forth the glory of God who has called us out of darkness and into his marvellous light. Amen. I wonder if there's anyone in the house this morning that has been called out of darkness and put into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. That is something to rejoice about this morning. Hallelujah. A life poured out for his glory is not marked by is marked by fulfilling the purpose of God rather than personal pleasure. Romans 12 tells us to present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God and to have a transformed mind. Why? That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says that it is in God that we live and move and have our being. When we pour out our life for His glory, our focus is on pleasing God and being obedient to His Word. Ecclesiastics 3.11 tells us that God has planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose. In the human heart, you and I have an eternal purpose. God's placed that within us. You and I have a purpose to fulfill, His purpose, to be conformed to His image. A life poured out for His glory strives to walk in the Spirit and keep sin out of our life. We are admonished to crucify our flesh and the lust thereof. To die daily, Romans 6.13 says, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right. Why? For the glory of God. In His glory, for His glory. Our carnal flesh fights against us. So we must be diligent in keeping sin out. Don't give the enemy a foothold in your life. Don't open a door. How long will we allow that sin to so easily beset us to remain in our life? How long before we lay it aside? The apostle used the word serve in this verse. Understand that when we allow sin in our life, we become a slave to that sin. I don't want to be a slave to sin. 
I don't want to be to a slave to anything but Jesus Christ. That's what the apostle said. He said, I am a slave for Christ's sake. Hallelujah. So it's a matter of the daily choices I make that will either lead me down the road to slavery, to sin, or the road of righteousness to freedom in Christ. I heard this the other day. Allowing sin in your life will change your theology. When we give in to the desires of our flesh, eventually we will tolerate that desire or that sin in our lives and it will change what we believe and what we stand for. A life poured out for his glory is a life that loves the truth of the word of God. The Bible is our daily bread. We cannot neglect it. Don't allow the world to dictate the daily download of information into your mind. We are so bombarded in the 21st century. Social media, the abundant number of different news sources. You know, I don't have it at home, but you go to a hotel room and you put the TV on and it's like 50 channels of different news. It's like how many times can you tell the same story? But it's a constant bombardment of, of things trying to download into our mind. Different opinions, beliefs, agendas, Google and other search engines. Where does the Word of God fit into my life? What is the daily download that's coming into my mind every single day? Where does the Word of God fit? His word must be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. We hear it so often today that truth is relative and what I believe is true is truth to me. But that's not Bible. It honestly doesn't matter what I think and what I proclaim as my truth. What does the Bible say? What am I going to stand on today? God honors his word above his name. Heaven and earth, he said, will pass away. But his word will never pass away. It is from the word of God that faith comes. It is from the word of God that we find salvation. It is from the word of God that we come to freedom. It is the word of God that helps us overcome sin. It is the word of God that discerns the thoughts and the intents of our heart. The word of God is part of our spiritual armor to defeat the enemy. Love the word of God. Love it by being obedient to it. Don't let what the preacher reads from the Bible in a Sunday service be the only Bible input you have all week. Love the word of God by paying attention to it and is pouring out your life for his glory. Uphold its truth. And as I was preparing this, I became overwhelmed with emotion. And I want to address our young people. I know every, this applies to everyone, but particularly our young people. I know that our youth conference is next weekend. And you will receive so much from what is preached and taught and what you receive in fellowship with one another. And that is awesome. And as a young person, I was there once. It's great. And we loved it. But after the conference, and when you go back to your jobs and your universities and your schools and your families, Uphold the truth of the Word of God. Don't water it down. Don't change it to suit your comfort level or your theology. And we heard it yesterday if you were on the ANOP call with Brother Gonzalez yesterday the session. He talked about this. And he talked about not allowing the things of this world, the theologies of this world and false doctrines to come in and infiltrate, especially the young people. Because one day we are not going to be here and the truth of the Word of God must be continued in the way that was once delivered to the saints. 
so sad when we read about Joshua and the generation that rose after him. And Brother Gonzalez mentioned it yesterday, that they knew not the Lord nor the things that the Lord had done for them. We cannot allow this truth to go by the wayside. And I say to you, love the truth. Love the Word of God. Allow it to consume you, to pour into you. In our first reading, it's said to be watchful in all things, to endure afflictions, to live your life for His glory sometimes means we endure affliction. To do the work an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Each one of us here this morning is an evangelist for God. Amen. Evangelism doesn't happen in this congregation per se, but individually my evangelism occurs when I walk out these doors to the people that I interact with every single day. You and I are evangelists for His glory. You and I pour out our lives to others for His glory. Amen. A life for, poured out for His glory fulfills the ministry ministry that God has called us to. A life poured out for His glory bears the fruit of the Spirit. John 15, 8 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Glorify God through what you allow to bear fruit in your life. We read it in the Bible where it says that a tree bear can bear good fruit or bad fruit. And I ask you this morning, what sort of fruit is coming off your tree? Is it good fruit unto eternal life or is it bad fruit? Let us be sure that we produce good fruit that glorifies God. Amen. Hallelujah. When I pour out my life unto the Lord and I seek his kingdom first, the Bible says that all these things shall be added unto me. When I pour out my life unto the Lord, my affections will be set on things above and not below. When I pour out my life unto the Lord, I will redeem the time. When I pour out my life unto the Lord, the desires of my heart will align with His will and His purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the temple, when the drink offering was poured on the sacrifice, there was nothing left. It was totally consumed. When David poured out the water from the well in Bethlehem, he poured out the whole container out as a sacrifice unto the Lord. There was nothing left. Jesus gave his life and poured out his life unto death. The heroes of the faith in Hebrews 11 poured out their lives. The Bible says they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And then the Bible goes on from that. The next scripture says, Wherefore, Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. They poured out their lives. They gave it all for the sake of the kingdom. I mentioned earlier that when a drink offering was given, the entire contents belonged to God. Nothing was kept for anyone or anything else. And this is what the Bible says. Do, not, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? 
for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You and I are bought with a price, with the precious blood of Jesus who poured out his life unto death to make eternal life possible for us. Because of this, give God glory through what you do in your body every single day. What will I pour out my life for? What was poured out as a drink offering to God was not possible to gather back up and what had been poured out. It was consumed by fire or it was poured out on the ground or the life was ended through death. Hallelujah. Many in the book of Acts poured out their lives for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. I wanted to show you something this morning. To give you a visual of what it's like to pour something out. I couldn't pour it out on the ground because then we'd have to clean it up. But if you think about this, that when we pour out something from a jug or whatever onto the ground... Eventually, it's going to go. It's going to dissipate. There's going to be nothing left. And so if this jug represents my life, what am I going to pour it out for? Am I going to pour it out for the things of this world, for my pleasures, to gain fame, to gain the accolades of man. Because we all eventually have only been given a, this amount, our life. What am I going to pour it out for? Because once it's poured out, you can't get it back again. So am I going to pour it out for his kingdom? For the sake of the cross, for the sake of the souls that are going to hell, for the sake of eternity, what am I going to pour my life for? Until eventually there's nothing left. And I will stand before God. My sins have gone before me. And he will say, what did you do with your life, Gina? Did you pour it out for me? What will determine what you pour your life out for? Will I pour it out for this world, for myself? Or will I pour it out for his glory? That is our theme this year, for his glory. God, everything in my life, let it be for your glory. You know, we sing that song, withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. That is a life poured out for his glory. Withholding nothing. It comes from putting God first in our life, to seek the purpose of God in our life, to keep sin out of our life, to love the truth, to stand for truth, to be fruitful, and to pour out our life for His glory. Hallelujah. So I ask you this morning, to consider what you will pour your life out for. We don't know how long we have. Whether Jesus comes back, 
or our life is taken. But I don't want to leave anything in my life that's not poured out for Christ. And I know we may have some guests here today or online watching, but Jesus, I want to say this, that Jesus poured out his life for you. He poured out his blood. He gave his life. God wrapped himself in flesh and came and humbled himself to, as a human for the sake of giving you eternal life. So this morning, if you don't know Christ, if you've never given your life to the Lord, he is coming to you this morning and saying, I gave my life for you, that you may understand what it is to have eternal life. I love you so much that I give you my life. Today is a day of decision. Whether you know the Lord or you, this is new to you. God is calling you. What will you do with Jesus? We are coming into Easter next weekend where we celebrate the, the birth, death, and the resurrection or the resurrection of Christ. He rose for you. He rose for you and I. His blood was shed. His life was poured out for you and I. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why don't we stand this morning? A life poured out for the sake of the kingdom. Jesus is offering us salvation this morning. You can be baptized, you can repent. Jesus can wash away your sins this morning, whatever it is. He can give you peace. He can give you joy. He can take away the addictions because of his life that was poured out. Hallelujah. Why don't we bow our heads for a moment? It's so easy to get out, let our lives become so consumed with the day-to-day -day that we forget about God or it's just a Sunday thing. But God is calling us this morning to a life poured out for His glory. God, everything I do, everything, whatever I do, I withhold nothing. I withhold nothing. The apostle said it. He said, to gain Christ and everything else is but dung. I don't want anything else but Christ. So I'm going to open this altar this morning. Let it be a time of consecration where you reconsecrate your life to pour it out. God, I pour out my life to you. As we sing this song, I withhold nothing, oh God, I withhold nothing. I withhold nothing for your glory, for his glory. This altar is open if you would like to come and pray.